thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. Hello, Exchange family. Welcome to another episode of Chief Chat. I'm Emily Zarsk, an Exchange social media designer, joined today by my co-host, Kiana. Chief Osby is traveling today, so it will just be us. Kiana, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. I'm really, really excited about um, today. This is going to be an amazing show, and I know that Chief Osby is um, very sad to miss this um, episode and miss this guest, but I want to first thank the soldiers, airmen, guardians, marines, sailors, Coast Guard members, and military families for joining us. We're really excited to have this guest on this week of Veterans, this week of Veterans Day. He's an Army veteran, a motivational speaker, actor, author, and an advocate for veterans and amputees. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Travis Mills. Yes. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Uh, still handicapped. Woke up that way again today. Couldn't believe it, but I still got cool tricks. So, like, that doesn't even you think that would hurt, but it don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, no, I know that today's going to be fun. I'm sorry. I can be serious, so I have to be serious. It's not really what I do, but excited to be here. No, just be yourself, and we're definitely happy to have you with us. Where are you coming to us from? Well, I live in the great state of Maine, and believe it or not, the weather here today is in the 70s, which is uh a little bit um off of the normal temperatures for maine this time of year but coming from maine and thankful to be living here um and enjoying you know the uh the four seasons that's amazing and maine is actually one of my favorite states um i remember we went as a family and i really wanted to go on like a tropical vacation and my mom was like no we're going to maine and then when we once we got there, I was like, oh, I get it. Maine is beautiful and has the best lobster because Texas does not have the best lobster. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not a lobster person. So if you ever want to come eat all the lobsters, you're more than welcome to. And I won't even Yet, say anything negative, you know. I cannot believe you're not a lobster roll fan. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's the, the tasting of rubber I don't like, you know, so... <laughs> Even I don't like blue cheese. Yeah, I don't like blue cheese either because it tastes like what I think like my foot used to smell like after a long day at the office. So, you know. Oh, Travis, I don't know if we can be friends. This is hurting my heart. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Um, I'm sorry. I just I, might as well start a friendship off on honesty. You know what I mean? You're right. Uh, but if you're talking Philly cheese sticks, I'm in. And I did see when. Um, as the logos hit, you guys talk with Paige and Josh Wetzel, wonderful people. They are close friends of mine. Uh, he lost his legs too, um, and we covered together at Walter Reed actually. So pretty cool that uh, I saw their faces shine up there. Wow, what a small world. That's awesome. And then, so speaking of, so what motivated you to join the military? Well, you know, I had a girlfriend that convinced me to move home from college football. And then it just so happened that she had a boyfriend. So I gave up my whole NFL career and MLB career and then realized I needed to join the military because uh, she ruined everything for me. And I don't want you guys to think I'm salty about it, but when I look back at my life, I'm like, how did I get blown up? How'd this happen? Uh, it's her fault. So no, if I'm being honest, college wasn't my thing. Uh, I'm not crazy on, um, you know, getting in a lot of debt for something I wasn't focused on. And I thought I better try something different. And I talked to the recruiting station and I had it narrowed down with the army and the Marines. And then the army had a better thing going, I felt like. So I joined the 82nd Airborne Division. Um, and, you know, I just, I loved every minute of it. No, that's exciting. So my dad was in the army as well. So I'm an army brat. So I definitely agree. You went the right direction. And I dated a Marine before and yeah, no, you did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. We love all the service members, but. Speaking well, of your time, you, you, have to like, you have to like read the menu at restaurants, what's on there, <laughs> explain jokes. No, 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 but I mean, similar, close. It's like, oh, no. well, bless your heart. That's what it came up from people talking to Marines. You know, in the South, that's not a compliment. Yeah. But it was, they made that to hurt Marines' feelings. 
<laughs> Hilarious, no. Um, so you spent a lot of time in the Army. You did some time in Afghanistan. So can you tell us about your time in Afghanistan and, and how that obviously has changed your life? Yeah, so my first deployment, I went when I was, uh, you know, just 19, ready to go. And I was there for 15 months. But on that deployment, um, I had a medic that had a little sister that thought I was cute. And she was 18 in college. And I had turned 20. And she sent a MySpace friend request. And I was like, don't know her. And then I realized, like, oh, my gosh, that's my medic's little sister. And I hit accept to antagonize him. Turns out we really like each other and we've been married 14 years now. But uh, over the years in the army, I, I did have three deployments. Um, the second one was a year long and the third one, I left behind my four month old little girl in late February, as well as my wonderful wife. I went over to Afghanistan and a month and a half in, I happened to set my backpack down on a bomb. The bomb went off and it took portions of both arms and both legs. So now I'm a quadruple amputee, uh, one of five surviving quadruple amputees with my injuries, I guess. And, you know, it shaped everything. It, it changed my whole entire uh, life trajectory, if you will. Um, and I tell people I, I saw the bomb and I was like, boy, I can do 20 years or I can call it at six. You know, so I just walked into early retirement and uh, just kidding. That's a, that's a joke, obviously. Um, but no, I I got blown up and I had 19 months of recovery at Walter Reed, where I told my wife she should leave me and my daughter and my wife, you know, were there by my side every step of the way and uh, been able to, you know, do some pretty cool things and thankful to uh, to live through my injuries because the doctors and nurses and medical staff that worked on me, you know, for uh, 14 hours straight. Wow. It's incredible. And um, I also forgot about the MySpace days. So that's yeah. a great yeah. part of the story as well. Did you ever make it to your wife's top eight on MySpace? I was number one. We met, we started talking and, you know, when I was sitting there, I was like, oh, do I hit accept or not? And I'm really good at antagonizing <laughs> people. So like, I'll give you for instance, like when I was injured, I was like, my mom was by my bedside one day. I said, mom, why did this happen? And she's like, well, you know, karma. So if that tells you anything, about my personality. I'm just kidding. I was my mom's a saint, but uh, no, I, I, yeah, we hit it off. And then our first date we had never met before. And I had 18 days of R and R coming up. So we booked a trip to Cozumel, Mexico. Um, oh, nice. She was 18 and, I was nice. 20, and we went to Mexico. Yeah. Her parents wow. were not pleased, you know. <laughs> That's so, putting my know. first date to fame. We shared chips and salsa. <laughs> But no, we had, chips and salsa. we had chips and salsa uh, in Cozumel, but we did. With a, with a did. beach view. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, yeah, we never met before. We only talked online for like a couple months. And then we're like, hey, you want to go to Mexico? And she's like, yeah. So we're like, let's do that. So we did. That's awesome. And so you could have just um, given up after your injury and just felt sorry for yourself. Was it difficult to get past that? Because what we see today and what we've seen in these, I don't know, 10 minutes is an outgoing, upbeat guy that loves to crack jokes. So mm -hmm. was it difficult to get past, um, you know, obviously your life changing in a major way? I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's a few, few things, right? So at first I wasn't obviously happy about this and I woke up for the first time out of my medical sedation that I was in for four days on my 25th birthday. And I did question, am I a bad person? Does God hate me? Why did I live through this? Um, you know, why did I just die? And then, you know, I had to call my wife and I didn't want to deal with that. So I called her and the only thing I said was, Hey, what's up? I'm fine. Love you. Bye. I called my parents did the same thing. And then made back stateside and they had to rush me into emergency surgery. I had my right leg had ripped open. And then the next day I saw my wife on the 18th of April and I said, you don't have to do this. Like, this isn't life I would choose for you, right? I'm just going to be a burden. I mean, I went from the guy that could do anything, six foot three, uh, 250 pound athletic guy to now a guy that has literally no arms and legs and has to, you know, ask for help for literally everything. Um, and I thought, you might as well just go. And she's like, that's how this works. So her by my side and not leaving when I told her to, and my daughter looking up at me at six months old, because now I'm you know, still her dad uh, meant the world to me. There was a lot of days, you know, for the first like six months, I don't think I looked in a mirror at myself. 
you know, from the neck down because I mean, I got a little arm, you know, I got no legs. Um, but with my recovery came the understanding that I did live. And I can remember playing this day sitting outside of an appointment one day, looking at the TV screen and my buddy Frankie came across the screen and I was like, holy crap, that's Frankie. What's he doing on the TV? And he, he died. He was blown up and killed in a truck um, in Afghanistan. And he had a four year old at the time. And I thought, you know, how lucky am I to make it home and how selfish is it for me to be upset uh, about my injuries? Um, and, and not upset like, oh, this is terrible. Why this happened? But more like, oh, why would I live through this or what the heck? Because I was given the opportunity, thanks to my medics, the doctors, the nurses and all that to live through my injuries. And I was given like a second chance at life. So I was really upbeat always um, before I got blown up. I'm the same guy I was before. I don't look at myself as having the same injuries as what you see, right? Like you guys see, I have prosthetic legs, prosthetic hand. I see myself as I just have a few more steps in the morning. My legs go on, then my pants, you know, my arm goes on, then my shirt. And I get put together and I go about it. I drive, I take my, my uh, you know, daughter to school. I took my daughter to school this morning, came back and I drove my son to school. And then I came back. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and then whatever I go about my day. So, so I guess I, I know I get long winded here and I'm, I'm trying not to, but uh, at first it was definitely difficult, but realizing the fact that I was still around to be there with my daughter growing, I learned how to walk with my daughter. You know, we, we, we were holding our hands, my prosthetic hand and her you know hand, and we were walking around the gym together. And the fact that a lot of my friends didn't get the chance to, make it home to their families uh keeps me going every day realizing that you know it'd be a selfish slap in the face to them and their families that have sacrificed so much you know um for this country so yeah i guess i don't know it took me a little bit but not that long now so since suffering your injuries you've made it your mission to help veterans and other amputees through the travis mills foundation so what is the mission of the foundation and how um does it help others who have served well you know it's all about making me more popular uh because i love me but uh no, <laughs> honestly no my wife kelsey and i we wanted to give back we were showing so much love and support at walter reed that we thought we should give back and do something so we started giving care packages out and then I went on these cool trips, learned how to go downhill mountain biking and uh, kayaking and uh, snowboarding and a bunch of crazy stuff. And I thought, you know what? This is amazing. How lucky am I to be able to do this stuff? And I said, I bet we can bring families together to do this. And we thought, let's just build something to bring families together that have been through physical injuries, such as amputation like mine or paralyzation or spinal cord injury, something physically debilitating. And... Uh, you know, we had this idea. We started uh, very modestly, uh, homegrown, like rented a camp one week of a year. And then it built out to be something that we bought a facility in 2015, fixed it up for like $3 million that we didn't have, just donations and people believing in our cause to opening it in 17 and now helping, you know, hundreds of families, thousands of people. And I'm uh, fortunate to be a keynote speaker. So when I travel around and I talk, People always ask me about like, what do you do for post-traumatic stress? And I had no answer except for check this foundation out or this foundation out. And now we became a chapter of the Warrior Path program, which is one of the top programs for uh, post-traumatic stress. And we're just so lucky to, you know, be a partner there. So that way we do 12 weeks out of the year for people with post-traumatic stress. And this is important, people watching. It's not only combat veterans for the PTS program, it's also first responders. And then as far as the family camps, it's uh, physical injuries due to service. So you could have been in a car accident stateside um, and still qualified to come out and be a part of this. No, oh, that's great. Yeah. And so you don't prefer the term wounded warrior instead. And we actually just saw it in that video. Um, you like using the term you coin recalibrated veteran. What is a recalibrated veteran? Well, it's nothing against anybody. People always wonder if it's against anybody out there, and it's not. It's not against Wounded Warrior Project. I just had a guy say, oh, you're one of those wounded guys. And it started to eat at me because I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, I used to be. Granted, I was, but now I'm healed. I have no more scars or no more injuries. I have scars. 
And, you know, they're pretty gnarly, but I lived through it. I'm not wounded anymore. I'm healed. Let's move forward past my injuries. And that's, you know, that's the biggest thing with me is I want people to see me as the business owner, right? As the philanthropist, as more importantly, the family man um, that I am rather than the guy with no arms, no legs. And uh, I wanted to, you know, move past the wounded word. So we went ahead and said, recalibrated warrior or recalibrated veteran. And it's just like, you had to find a new normal. You know, like I said, my arms and legs go on, then my clothes and I go about my day. I still drive and do everything I want to do. Um, so I kind of just take the stigma of the, the word wounded out of it. Plus, you know, people are always like, oh, you're a veteran. You automatically like, oh, you got that post-traumatic stress or do you have a team, you know, whatever. And we've kind of made it in the nation, not we as, you know, the three of us here, but the veterans become kind of a negative connotation of like, oh, what's wrong, you know? And I'm like, hey, look, I'm fine. Um, you know, I've been, I've been blessed to live through my injuries, uh, have a wonderful, you know, foundation with amazing staff members and volunteers. And then I, I don't know, I happen to have a few more businesses, um, that I just decided why not go after us. Now, so you also, like you mentioned, you do a lot of motivational speaking appearances. So what is your message to your audiences and why is it important for you to share that message? Yeah, I mean, I tell them, don't step on bombs, you know, uh, and then I usually let them know, like, but if you do, you never get a speeding ticket ever again. Um, it's like get out of jail free card. So it's not all bad. But uh, no, I, I go around. I'm fortunate to travel and I do a lot of speaking. And, you know, I talk about resiliency. I talk about understanding that, you know, you can get through anything that life throws at you. Um, no matter what happens, you can always push forward. And that we're all in this together. I tell people, you know, don't downplay your problems that you're going through because you see mine, because we all have stuff that we go through. And the truth is, you know, your biggest problem is your biggest problem. So there's no reason why you should feel like you're inadequate when you talk to me. It's, it's more about, hey, these are things I use to get better, right? Motivation, I use goal setting. Um, the healthcare technology that goes into my prosthetics, like I showed you, my hand goes 360. It actually does help, believe it or not. To do that and then i talk about just uh, how my legs work and the last thing is all about you know perspective you know my friends didn't make it back home the doctors and nurses could have gave up on me but they they decided to donate blood from their veins right to me mm, we live in a modern world where i'm not in my office and my dog is barking <laughs> so i apologize i'm gonna have to throw him outside i think <laughs> oh. i'm telling you i'm sorry i don't have to do about it stop stop Jim. Oh, can you guys hear that? No. It's okay. You want to hear the conversation. It's okay. Yeah. We're yeah. Just it. I think my wife maybe just got back with my son. Um, so maybe he'll get, I don't know, whatever. I'm sorry. This is this shouldn't happen. I know. No, it's okay. It it's real life. Yeah. We are not. Yeah. If it helps, it's a dog I didn't even want. My buddy like bought my wife a, and me a dog. And he's like, oh, wait, didn't you guys want one? I'm like, Bob, I didn't. I didn't want this dog at all. And he's like the what greatest dog, dog ever. So I'm like, Fox Red Lab. Oh, Everybody's always like, hey, yeah, there was like, you want a service dog? I'm like, no, I, I have a dog. You know, and they're like, don't you want a dog that listens? And I'm like, my dog listens. And I show my tricks off to my dog. I'm like, sit when you want. Or like, stop barking when you feel like it. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I got way off topic. I'm sorry. Anyway, no. I know we're live. So this is embarrassing. My father in law didn't put him somewhere else in the house. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, I actually, well, I'm in my office today, but my cat, Cat Stevens, he likes to meow a lot, if that makes you feel better on calls. Um, yeah. So, and I'm a big cat person. So some, some people would think that's embarrassing too, for being a cat person. <laughs> but anyway. I, I don't, but I'm not. But anyway, sorry, I know we got more questions. I apologize. No, you're okay. So some people that uh, there are some people that were not happy with the way things ended in Afghanistan and Afghanistan, excuse me, and question why we were even there. You have a unique perspective on that. Would you mind sharing that with us? I hope I get this right. Um, yeah, I think it was time to leave. Honestly, it was 100% time to leave. Uh, the way we did it probably wasn't, I think, the most well thought out plan. 
I think we should have probably kept Bagram and Kandahar, which are literally Air Force bases. Um, but at the same time, when I was over in Afghanistan and we couldn't shoot the bad guys, couldn't go out and get them at nighttime because of the rules of engagement, and I got blown up and a lot of people got blown up because we weren't allowed to fight the war anymore, it was, you know, it was just time to leave. So I think it was good that we left. We were done. There was no mission to win, and we're not willing to drop an atomic bomb you know, or do anything, you know, by any means means necessary to win. So there was no way to declare a victory over there. Um, I think we did a great job with education and school building and wells and and showing what freedom can be. But at the end of the day, it was it was just time to go home. So we have service members and America's Armed Forces and their families watching right now. What would you like to say to them today? Hey, what's up, you winners? Uh, thanks for your service and your family sacrifice. Uh, greatest job I ever had was in the Army, besides for being a dad, of course. And, uh, you know, as much as as um, the, you work for the Army, you know, or the, or the military, you know, make sure the military works for you. You know, find out what benefits. I just had a conversation with a friend of mine who's a Marine, um, and yes, he's my friend, about he was going to put money down on a house. And I said, just get the VA, you know, loan or whatever. He goes... Yeah, but I want money down, and we did the math out, and it only saved him 120 bucks, like a month. And I'm like, buddy, that's that's why it's a benefit. So, I don't know. Besides for that, um, appreciate everyone's service, and and uh, like I said, greatest job I ever had. Thank you for that. And you also live by the motto of never give up, never quit. How did you come up with that, and what is its meaning to you? Well, I was working out, and I was heavily medicated uh one of the first days of my working out and i have an iphone footage of me like doing sit-ups and the occupational therapist is like hey do you want to take a break and i'm like what no i'm never gonna give up i'm never gonna quit doing this and she's like i know it's a silly question and i mean i was i was drugged up pretty bad on my painkillers or something but i just kept going and then i thought you know what this will work and then my speech coach uh mary who's out of texas she goes you know i think you're the only person that gets away with using a double negative and it works for you so I just kind of, you know, kept with it. And it's the most annoying thing to my parent or my, uh, my kids, because my daughter will be like really upset about something. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. What, what was that? And she's like, oh my gosh, dad, I know. Never give up, never quit. Oh gosh. <laughs> and she's 11. But, uh, you know, for me, it's just, I, I, I keep going. Um, and I'm thankful to have the opportunity to do that. But I also, I don't let the little things, you know, kind of get me down. People are like, hey, Travis, when you have a bad day, like, What's that look like? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I broke my phone screen. Um, but I don't have like those days where it's like, you know, some people are like, I couldn't move or get out of bed. I'm like, I got up at five. I got up, you know, got up, had my coffee and set my wife's coffee up. I went with my day and, and kept pushing forward because I was given the opportunity to, to still be here. Um, so I think maybe that just stems from the whole never give up, never quit part. Oh, and it sounds good, too. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does sound good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. No, and back to what you were saying about benefits, though. So at the exchange, and I'm sure you know this, um, veterans with service connected disabilities are still able to shop in store. They can go to their local PX or BX or their favorite one, doesn't be local, um, and shop, and it's still tax free. So that's a benefit that our veterans have earned, then um, honorably discharged veterans can shop online with us at shopmyexchange.com as well. So share that with your friends and then anyone watching who hasn't shared that with their veterans, make sure you let them know because it is their benefit, their hard earned benefit. So we do have some well, comments. Let me just level you. with you. Let me just level with you. I do know that. Yeah. And the only place I can find the, the boxers that I wear just happens to be uh -huh. the PX. So, so nice. Hey, we yeah, love you. Gotta have those. So, got, we yeah. Got <laughs> we Sorry, that made it. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. So, yeah, the dog agrees. So Kelly says, <laughs> Travis, I don't have a question, but as a veteran and as the mother of a Marine wounded warrior who struggles with his lingering challenges, I just want you to know I appreciate you and your efforts so much. Thank you. And she's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Whoa. Oh. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Miranda says, just a few businesses, Travis, with a wink face. 
Yeah, yeah. Wait, no, so how many different you have? Uh my buddy and I bought a marina one night. Uh, we were drinking whiskey and talking about it. And his wife, my wife, said, "Don't buy it." So eight years ago, we bought a marina. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, I just opened a restaurant, and I'm opening a brew. We're putting a brewery in soon. Um, small partner of an insurance company, my speaking company, and then I just uh, started a clothing line that we're going to launch real heavy now, this week called Rebel for Good, and it's all about like you know changing the meaning of rebel to be a good thing and like do good in the world. And 15% of everything that we sell gets given back to nonprofits out of our profit, not out of anybody else for a roundup campaign. So uh, I keep myself busy, you know, yeah. and then I think I'm forgetting something. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question about your also, marina. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you said there's a brewery and a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it's going to be in Maine and there's not going to be any lobster on the menu though. Oh, that's the beauty. Here's one thing. I am super good at building teams. So I've never ran a marina before. But my mom and dad came and ran that for me for a little bit to get us on our feet. I never owned a restaurant, but I found a great chef um, and three, or, um, three awesome business partners that have either built something, can run the technology, or are general managers of restaurants. And... There's lobster on the menu. There's uh, haddock and nice. I don't like fish or anything. So yeah, we got that. Yes. That's okay, awesome. then I will go to your restaurant. <laughs> White duck brew pub. Just so you know. No, okay, love perfect. it. Now, and then a serious question from Julia. Did you have survivor's guilt and how did you work, work through that? I personally am dealing with it and I would love some tips. So I didn't have survivor's guilt. Um, nobody got killed when I got blown up. Two other guys got hurt, but I was, um, you, you know, we all got hurt, but I guess my injuries were the worst of, of the three of us. If you look at like lifelong effects and survivor's guilt, I understand it. But at the same time, you were given the opportunity to live through your injuries, um, live through your situation. And maybe your friends didn't like mine didn't. So I find every chance I get to go out and do something um you know either either for myself or you know in their honor i guess i i have the opportunity to live so i'm going to make the best of it and i don't get stuck on the survivor's guilt thing because i must have been saved for a reason and i might as well make the most of each day that i was given um you know because nothing's guaranteed and at the end of the day i wasn't supposed to make it but somehow i did so i, I think maybe that's the uh, the difference in my outlook and a lot of people that have survivor's guilt. You know, I, I, I didn't do anything to create um, anybody getting hurt that day. I just, you know, the minesweeper in front of me that was going back and forth missed it. Um, not his fault, nobody's fault. And I just decided, you know, early on, like I'll make the best of every day because I was given the opportunity to still be here. And I think that's the important message people need to realize. Did you see a little kid in the background just zim by? Yes, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's my five-year-old. <laughs> uh, he's got home from school. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, does he just have half day, like half day school? Or yeah, he's like in a pre-K right now. He's the youngest in his class last year, so we held him from going to kindergarten this year, so he'd be the oldest instead of the youngest. Ah, uh, I love his I hair. Love looks that great <laughs> I love that. And so it was also recently announced that you'll be the keynote speaker at the kickoff luncheon for the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl next month. What can attendees uh, expect from that appearance? Well, I won't be contagious. They're going to be like, oh, am I going to catch arms and legs? And I promise them <laughs> they're not going to catch arms and legs. You know, oh but, uh, but no, I mean, we'll have a good time. My story is... Uh, as sad as it can be told, I don't tell it in a sad way. I tell a lot of jokes like you've seen here. Um, we'll have a good time talking about perspective. And then, you know, hopefully they get something out of it. Um, every audience, I got to go to New Hampshire tomorrow tomorrow morning and then Cleveland and then Arizona in the next, like, week and a half uh, for speaking. And hopefully everybody just enjoys it. We have a good time and there's a good football game to go along with it. <coughs> Sorry. 
And speaking of the Armed Forces Bowl, this will be the sixth year that the exchange is an advertiser on the game. We'll also be there on game day with our mobile field exchange and plenty of free swag for the fans. For those interested in attending, tickets can be purchased at armedforcesbowl.com. And maybe we'll see you there, Travis, Kiana and I, and the rest of the exchange family. That would be fun. Absolutely. Uh, I'm supposed to be there unless unless it didn't go well today and then I get in trouble. I knew that dog was going to get me in trouble. I, knew uh, I, think, I, I think the decision's still out on that one. We'll let you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry about the bags are in my eyes. I didn't realize how haggard I look. I'm telling you. Ugh. <laughs> no, it's okay. We really get in town. It's no. really been an honor <laughs> Speaking with you today, though, um, so where can viewers go to learn more about you and the Travis Mills Foundation? And also, what can they do to support the cost? Absolutely. So let me bring back to that. So um, as many businesses that I'm fortunate to be a part of, um, the Travis Mills Foundation is you know something I'm so proud of and thankful to be a part of. Uh, as the president and founder, I actually don't take a salary. There's no money coming my way. It's not about me. It's about giving back to these families. Um, and all they've been through. So if anyone wants to find out more about the Travis Mills Foundation, just visit, uh, just visit travismillsfoundation.org. Um, we'd love to have you sign up to, you know, uh, be a volunteer. You can get on our, our annual appeals list to get all the newsletters and just get involved. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing that I'm able to do the work that I am doing with the foundation because of people out there that support and believe in us and uh, help us so much. So, you know, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. And again, uh, I hope everybody checks out the website or the Facebooks and all that Instagram and uh, gives us a like and a share and a follow because um, we're changing, you know, the lives of a lot of people and I'm just honestly grateful to have the opportunity to do it. Thank you so much. And for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Thursday, November 17th, when Medal of Honor recipient and author, retired Lieutenant General Robert Foley joins the chat. Also mark your calendars for 3 p.m. Central on November 29th to hear from rapper and entrepreneur Rick Ross. Travis, thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for all you do to support the military community. Having you with us today means so much. And of course, we wish you all the best. Well, no, I appreciate you having me. Thanks so much. I hope this was uh, good. And I'm sorry for the modern day interruptions. Um, but you know what? Hey, at least I'm, I'm honest about it. You know, I, I, my dog <laughs> and my, my son and uh, I'm so lucky to have a hectic uh, life. My daughter has basketball tryouts tonight. She's nervous but excited. And I cannot wait to figure that out with her before I leave tomorrow. So thanks for your time. Uh, enjoy the cat. I'm not sure if you have any pets, by the way, uh, Kiana, but I hope you guys have a great day. And thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Travis. And we ask if you could just um, hang on um, after the show and we will uh, say our formal goodbyes to you. Um, but thank you so much, Exchange Family, for watching and we will see you next week. Bye.